Thank you, Thank you Emerson. And uh, let's start because uh, it's a little long presentation, but I think it's worth it. It's a very unusual discussion of a subject that probably has not come to the attention of most of the audience. So we need to start uh, from basic and go gradually to full-blown comprehensive uh, discussion of a condition that came to the literature in the last 20 years maybe and is still very confused and uh, very interesting, intriguing. There's a color on the background today after seeing the weather. It's great turn tending to blue because tomorrow is going to be beautiful, but today is a good day to be in a conference. This is a picture that will give you a basic idea of what we're going to discuss today. It's a non-compaction left ventricle, which is basically a condition identified by the presence of a lot of bundles or muscles, or presumed muscles, inside the normal compact myocardium outside. This is something that uh, obviously has been present all the time, but until recently nobody they, did give a name and nor understood what it meant, nor had any interest in uh, dealing with it because it seemed to be quite irrelevant for the majority of the problems. They are not really inside the main cavity, but in the wall itself. Well, let's see if we can advance the discussion in view of uh, important uh, discoveries that we have uh, published last year in a final form after seven years of collecting data in a large study that we did <clears throat> by cardiac MRI in the Houston community in the public school in Houston uh, by using MRI to identify risk factors for high-risk cardiovascular condition for sudden cardiac death in athletes. One of the surprises of these studies is exactly the incredibly high incidence of or prevalence of high uh, non-compaction cardiomyopathy or non-compaction left ventricle that is a more proper name. We're going to touch several points, uh, both uh, uh, the basic data from this study that we uh, referred to, and then we'll go to non-compaction as it shows uh, in the uh, embryology <coughs> of the heart in normal and in animal. We're going to discuss uh, the spectrum of presentation in nature of this condition because many animals have predominantly hypertrabiculated ventricle and not compact uh, uh, muscle in the heart. We're going to eventually come up with a, a major uh, uh, discussion in the uh, uh, refined analysis by MRI of what is non-compaction in its entity or lack of entity in the muscle of the main pumping chamber of the heart, the left ventricle. Eventually, we're going to this. Uh, discuss uh, specifically the prognosis and the clinical implication of this condition and try to come up with a final theory on what is really this condition. Should it be called cardiomyopathy, a disease entity, or just be a, an unusual variety of uh, normal anatomy? Because this is basically what uh, large study, NIH uh, promoted, called the MESA trial, started introducing in the literature some uh, <clears throat> 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Eventually, in uh, 2012, they came up with a, a new uh, report that in the general population of people studied at 65 years of age, they were looking for factors promoting uh, events in cardiovascular disease of the atherosclerotic kind. They described, this, um, described that, that if you assume two segments of the heart to have uh, high trabeculations, 
6% of the general population in a population of about 1,000 uh, persons had non-compaction, and they call it non-compaction cardiomyopathy, and that was a little uh, doubtful if it was a cardiomyopathy. They describe it as uh, uh, Peterson. This is a name that will recur in many slides. Peterson criteria to identify non-compaction by a ratio between the compact and non-compact myocardium. If the non-compact thickness is more than 2.3 times uh, the normal uh, compact myocardium, we co call that condition as uh, non-compaction. Uh, also, as a secondary feature, they discovered and is a, a main point of our discussion that when there is a non-compaction, the compact myocardium underlining the non-compaction is thinner than normal. As an average, uh, many reports were given, none so precise and extensive as in our study, but is basically half of the normal thickness in other segments of the heart. So it's something that could lead to eventually cardiomyopathies by hypoplasia of the compact functioning myocardium. But this is pretty much the, the uh, result, uh, uh, conclusion of our study. 5,169 kids uh, age 11 to 18 years of age. We are dividing here in two, in two groups uh, to see if there is a, a progression with aging. But basically, the news, the main news that they want to get from this presentation that 1.47 of uh, <clears throat> the uh, patients at these ages have uh, high risk cardiovascular conditions. And we did not call non compaction cardiomyopathy as a high risk. But after uh, coronary anomalies, uh, cardiomyopathies, EKG abnormalities leading to a high risk of sudden death. There is a condition here, non-compaction left ventricle, that is amazingly frequent. 959 cases in the 5,000 kids is totally unexpected and unreported previously. This is something that we're going to see in different categories, in different subgroups of our um, uh, paper but is by itself something that requires some attention. Here is a, an interesting sub-analysis. If you look at the total uh, number of 5,142 5, that had diagnostic uh, value of MRI, the males had 21%, while the female had 16% prevalence of non-compaction cardiomyopathy. In different subsets of ethnic or racial uh, cohorts, you can see that the ratio difference uh, uh, between male and female is confirmed, uh, both in uh, Afro-American, uh, the mean is still 18.2, 18, 18 but uh, in female, only 14% had non-compaction, while 21.5% of the males had it. So this is uh, also true for Asians, Hispanics have the lowest uh, probability of having, no, actually the highest probability of having non-compaction cardiomyopathy, 23.7 male, 20.4. Uh, the white people uh, are something like 30% in the Houston schools, have also a significant amount with the same difference between male and female. With aging, the, the prevalence of this condition is basically the same. So the first conclusion on the S2P, uh, screening to prevent study, was that unexpectedly, non-compaction left ventricle is the most frequent anomaly in the human heart. Anomaly in the heart. And uh, this can occur in two conditions. One is should be called as being frequent and benign, garden variety. Uh, non-compaction left ventricle. And another one, much less frequent, non-compaction cardiomyopathy. That is less than 
0.1% of the cases in uh, this context. The uh, Peterson criteria was the one that we used also in our study with 2.3 to 1 non-compaction to compaction uh, layer. And the ECHO criterion, as you know, is that 2.0 to 1 is observed in N systole, which is, as we will describe, a major technical mistake. But the important thing that de describes a non-compaction cardiomyopathy is not so much the presence of trabeculations, but the presence of a left ventricular ejection fraction of less than 40% that defines basically simply uh, cardiomyopathy. <clears throat> This could be associated with exercise. And one of the surprises of our study is that to find out that in Houston, 60% of the kids that do the, did this study, basically is the general population that had the free study that doesn't hurt, it's very simple, and is very potentially useful or curious to have. 60% do more than six hours of running a week. So it's not a definition of an athlete, but could be related to the manifestation of this uh, condition in a little higher degree than in others. But most likely, this is not the true uh, clarification of uh, the reason of why this uh, in, uh, prevalence is so high. Let's start to go then to embryology. How does... Uh, non-compaction or high trabeculation appear in, in human embryo. In the first week of, uh, of uh, development, we recognize the heart initial presentation as a straight heart, a straight tube, where the layers of the heart are basically three, an outside clean surface, no uh, epicardium, then a single cell layer of myocardial cells, then jelly, and then an endocardial layer inside. This goes on for the first uh, week or two, and eventually the epicardium, they call it also epicardial organ, a layer of cells that come from the liver, travels around the coronary sinus from the back of the heart, to cover the whole extension of the heart to give a third layer or the epicardial layer. This is a very important uh, population of uh, traveling cells that come from the liver but is destined to form especially the coronary arteries. 90% of the coronary arteries have this origin of uh, cellular cells. Uh, so this is a, a population of cells covering the heart that has a lot of uh, coronary bound uh, stem cells. They have also cells for the adventitia, for the media, not only for the endothelial part of a, a coronary artery. Eventually, this heart monolayer muscle becomes uh, uh, proliferating actively. And at the end of the first month, we can see that the inside of the vessel, while the outside increases by five times the number of layers of myofibers, the inside of the uh, cavity of the primitive left ventricle or common ventricle is uh, filled up with the trabeculations. They call it embryonic trabeculation a structure that is uh, not functional. It's in the middle, has a capacity of requ uh, acquiring energy and nutrient uh, from the direct uh, uh, transference of uh, oxygen, but also glucose and anything goes on in the blood for the, its own nutrition. It keeps uh, viability, uh, histologic viability, but functionally there is nothing to, do, to be coming in the early embryo from uh, these trabeculations is the muscle that is compact that starts beating at the end of the first month that is also already heart beating. At the end of the sixth week, 
there is the most critical event that occurs in the embryo uh, disregard, which is the appearance of the aortic valve, the separation of common truncus in two arteries, uh, the aorta and pulmonary artery leads to the formation of the aortic valve. And the aortic valve is essential for the coronary circulation to appear and function properly because it gives us a high diastolic pressure. Otherwise, before the aortic pressure is the pressure in the ventricle, there is no separation between the aorta and the left ventricle. So this is uh, the issue of uh, uh, the first month uh, uh, anatomy. The presence of an aortic valve, a high diastolic pressure goes with a, an attraction that these uh, cell, cells in the proepicardium and the epicardial layer of the heart have to reach the outlet, uh, the aortic uh, and the pulmonary outlet uh, of the heart. At that point, the coronary arteries are organized in local uh, non-functional, no circulation, uh, primordial vessels or lakes that eventually touch and enter into the aortic uh, wall and start the uh, uh, circulation. And in a few days, even in human that has a longer gestational period, in a few days, you have, see the appearance of coronary arteries from the aorta coronary veins to the coronary sinus and capillary network around each cell, there is a system of vessels that uh, uh, provides a local distribution of the nutrients. So it's a very important, uh, um, we call it miraculous time, that eventually reflects also in terms of maturations of this trabecule, embryonic trabecule inside the main pumping chamber. At this time, the condition for compaction, transformation of the trabecule into compact myocardium that exists for sure, it is a normal phenomenon in embryo in human. The condition for this to, be, to occur is the presence of coronary arteries. But you will see how amazing is the formation of the coronary arteries at the intramyocardial level. It uses the intertrabecular spaces, the space where blood of the main left ventricle cavity surrounds uh, the trabeculations. There is a period around the end of the first month and a half of uh, uh, embryonic life in which uh, the compaction becomes quite aggressive and quickly doubles or triples the um, thickness of the compact myocardium, while tendentially the compact, uh, compacted uh, the um, trabeculation uh, disappeared, being acquired by the compact myocardium. And at the end of uh, the first month of life, of the first month and a half of life, uh, most of the trabeculae are already part of the compact myocardium. And normally, this embryonic uh, um, uh, early trabeculae disappear from the mature heart. To give you an idea what is this trabeculation, this is uh, stage 17. This is uh, a picture from uh, the Carnegie collation of uh, human embryos. Uh, at this stage, uh, as you see, there is already a, a, a almost compact myocardium in the septum, a compact myocardium of four or five cells, the myocardial fibers in the outside of uh, the main cavity. This is the left ventricle separated by a primitive ventricular septum. This is the right ventricle. And uh, these are not functional, functional myofibers. They are actually cells, primitive cells, but not functional myocardial cells. The myocardial cells, my, myofibers, are here in the outside. But this is a dramatic picture of a day or two in the life of an embryo that for some reason inspired a lot of people, and you see it 
frequently in YouTube, in uh, Google, and nobody knows where it comes from, but it's an incredible picture to show how compacted myocardium occurs by coalescence of this uh, trabecular embryonic uh, um, um, structure inside the muscle. And uh, the organization of these white lines are the early intramural vessels, artery, veins, and uh, capillaries. There are obviously the transformation of the intertrabecular spaces into vessels. So the endocardium layer, the inside the endocardial um, layer, is transformed into a vessel. This is amazing, but this is well described and confirmed. Recently, with the dramatic increase in uh, in uh, sophistication of histology. This is uh, basically a work that is done not only, but mainly by these people led by Dr. Christy Red Horse at uh, Stanford University. This shows uh, uh, the heart at the end of a month and a half of life uh, in human, but is in embryo is eight days of life. In uh, This is in mice and uh, it shows in red uh, what is the uh, proepicardial layer originating coronary arteries and the part of the heart, the anterior and the septum, comes from the um, vessels, uh, from the endocardium intertrabecular spaces. And here you see exactly the magic moment uh, where epicardial, this is the outside of the muscle, and this is the inside of the muscle where the compacting of uh, the trabeculae becomes a, a compact myocardium and the intertrabecular spaces become the lumen of vessels that separate uh, heart muscle from uh, um, vascular space. So this is definitely something that is confirmed to occur with very sophisticated cellular and molecular uh, histology. Later in life, the ventricular walls normally increase in thickness by multiplication of the cells existing there, besides acquiring compact, uh, non compact uh, uh, myocardium, these trabeculations into the outside wall. In uh, a normal human being, at the end of uh, uh, the fetal period at birth, the ventricular anatomy basically is established. The left side of the uh, left ventricle or the ventricular septum is smooth and clear of uh, trabeculations. The rest may have minor trabeculations, but not a compact, a, a consistent layer of uh, non-compact non uh, myocardium, as we see in this 20% of the a normal population in, in a school. From uh, analyzing the histologic, molecular, and uh, um, gross anatomy of uh, uh, the development in embryo and uh, in early uh, development uh, after birth, we can say definitively that two myths there are in the literature about the possibility that non-compaction left ventricle uh, appears and disappears cannot exist. You cannot expect compact myocardium to lose uh, uh, the complex intrinsic uh, population of cells. Vessels cannot become endocardial layer. So these two possibilities that uh, compaction and decompaction occurs and disappears and recurs in relation to uh, pregnancy typically, hyperthyroidism typically, uh, athletes uh, under severe stress uh, and uh, exercise conditions cannot make their heart develop and then uh, de uh, decompact uh, the left ventricle. This is congenital, occurs before birth is a congenital defect, not necessarily a genetic, and we will talk about the genetics of non-compaction 
in uh, the presence or absence of cardiomyopathy. Now we call for the animals general to show what they can do in the absence of compact myocardium. This is a, a group led by Dr. Jensen, a Danish uh, that lives in England and is a friend of uh, Dr. Peterson. So they did uh, MRI, histology, and gross anatomy of embryos in uh, adult uh, mammals, in uh, fishes, all sorts uh, of animals uh, where the heart is fairly large and uh, at different dimensions. And you can see how frequent uh, plus is the presence of uh, uh, non-compaction myocardium, uh, both in human, both during development and at the end of development there is a certain probability of having non-compaction. Uh, here it says the chimpanzee doesn't have developmental non-compaction, I'm not sure. But in general, we can prove from this uh, um, summary of the situation in the animals in, in total that the mice is a good example of a similar uh, panel uh, pattern of uh, organization of the left ventricle both in development and in embryonic development and in adults, they have a certain probability of non-compaction. They are simple animals like uh, uh, fishes that have a very highly trabeculated myocardium. 90% of the muscle is there and only 10% is compact myocardium and they work pretty well. This is the way they measure as uh, Peterson was advising the part of the ventricle that they call non-compaction with respect to compact myocardium. This is a normal heart, uh, the space between the papillary muscles and the wall of the uh, heart uh, is not really non-compact myocardium, um, non-compact layer of the left ventricle. But this is obviously different in uh, animals or human, they have multiple trabeculation inside the compact myocardium. So this is the most extreme case of the pig uh, where there is no absolute any uh, trabeculation inside the main pumping chamber of a normal adult pig. In chimpanzee is frequently and normal to have uh, uh, half of 50% of the muscle to be highly trabeculated. But uh, in zebra fish is the red fish. Uh, there are plenty of uh, of uh, trabeculations. You see there is a, a progression with the evolution of the species. They show that uh, the more evolved uh, animals have more frequently only partially trabeculated heart and the majority of the heart is compact myocardium and eventually simple animals they will have uh, mainly um, non-trabeculated uh, myocardium. This is Histology, finally, something solid to show what is the uh, uh, in animal with high level of uh, non-compaction. This is the shark and the, the trout. If you look at the compact myocardium, a lot of intramuscular uh, vessels. If you look at the uh, very high percentage of the left ventricle is full with the fine trabeculations. The trabeculations are disorganized, uh, are like in a sponge, not in a muscle that has to have some structure to produce, if there is contraction, a systolic uh, production of blood pressure. Here there are some fibers, but it's not clear if it is functional muscle in the absence of uh, functional result of the muscular effect. This is a, another... <clears throat> Uh, mention of this uh, group, um, Dr. Jensen and collaborator, they came with uh, a general theory of what is a normal embryo and uh, a normal adult, uh, especially in human, but especially they looked at the Purkinje fibers because uh, one of the accusations that is given by people that started talking about non-compaction cardiomyopathy is that arrhythmias are more frequent, sudden death is more frequent, and uh, they are talking about the need to put implantable defibrillator in people with non-compaction. Reality, it's important to see where the Purkinje system 
is subtle in a normal anatomy in human. Compact myocardium is below the small trabeculation, the residua that is, are present at birth. And the Purkinje fibers come from the AV node artery on top of the muscle, organized muscle, compact myocardium, and it's endocardial structure. When you have, uh, as it is uh, in non-compaction left ventricle, a lot of trabeculations, a lot of trabeculations, the Purkinje fibers appear and disorganized, rare, and probably non-functional. This muscle doesn't have uh, coordinated uh, activity if it has any activity. Obviously, in a totally uh, non-compacted uh, muscle, like in the simple ectoderm uh, uh, animals, the, there is no uh, Purkinje fibers uh, system. Now, in animals, uh, specifically in mice, it's easy to do experimentation changing the genes. So this is what uh, they have done in an incredibly uh, popular uh, theory, philosophy, uh, the basic embryologist, uh, experimental embryologist started affecting, deleting basically, genes that affect the normal development of the heart. And uh, it has been uh, now 20 years since uh, these experiments were started and we'll see the list of the experiments, where there's something like 30 different gene deletion that lead to non-compaction. Most of the time, non-compaction comes by application of these deletion uh, um, techniques affecting some genes applied in the first uh, few days of life of the mice not in the late age of uh, embryonic uh, uh, development or fetal development. The conclusion by all these studies is that it's easy to see non-compaction as a side product of any uh, genetic influence in the heart, but uh, only one study has produced the human, what we saw in the MRI study, uh, example of non-compaction of ventricle with the normal function of the heart. And that was uh, uh, described later on by Zhao. This is the first part of a list of 26 uh, different studies that a year and a half ago were reported by this group in Indianapolis. Uh, all sorts of different genes, uh, uh, deletion, applied by viruses, will lead uh, to this kind of uh, an incredible uh, uh, pathology. This is a normal animal, and this is the animal given this intervention. In this case, it might be one mutant uh, where you basically affect uh, the notch uh, uh, organizing system of the uh, human embryo heart. In, in this case, uh, uh, after applying this uh, deletion, the heart cannot uh, uh, basically form a compact myocardium, even the ventricular septum is quite incomplete. And uh, it's a very thin uh, free wall of the left ventricle compact layer. This is uh, the normal expected. And uh, eventually uh, the mortality in, in this experiment is something like 25% spontaneous abortion. <laughs> But at the end, uh, who has uh, su survived in this series uh, has uh, trabeculated, uh, are free in the ventricle and don't really make any action uh, for the function of the heart as a pump. The conclusion of these uh, studies seen from a functional or clinical eye from, as mine is that you can indeed uh, cause easily non-compaction uh, malformation of the heart, but usually they come with other important uh, an an anomalies like ventricular septal defects, uh, like cardiomyopathy, also hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a different uh, disease state than the benign non-compaction that we see in humans. This is another idea of what is histologically the non-compacted ventricle in human. This is a Best uh, anatomic study I found in the in the literature. This is 
Bill Roberts, a famous pathologist from Washington and eventually now in Dallas, that does describe the correct way for pathologists to find non-compaction cardiomyopathy or non-compaction left ventricle in, uh, in uh, autopsies. What you need to do is a cross-section of the heart. If you don't do this, you will describe that network of trabeculae, but don't understand the importance of this. If you do cross-sections, you will see uh, with some frequency uh, the presence of a layer of non-compaction inside a muscle that is uh, frequently or usually thinner than uh, at sites where there is no non-compaction, like in this. This is the septum, no non-compaction, and this is the free wall with the non-compaction and thinner wall. You know, we did a study simultaneously with the MRI study in the forensic center in Houston and reviewed the reports of the autopsy in 7,000 autopsies in three years in Houston, nor even one diagnosis of non-compaction event. Pathologists don't know what it is or don't think that it is severe enough or significant enough as to recognize it, not even with a name. These are pathology in uh, uh, hearts that usually come to our observation at the time of transplantation. The extreme degrees of uh, non compaction with cardiomyopathy. So these are very proliferative, uh, hypertrophic uh, um, uh, trabeculae disorganized, non-functional. The muscle that is functional is this one, frequently with the endocardial fibrolastosis. You see this white part of this uh, inner part of the non-compaction -trabe non trabeculae. Frequently is very dense and very small intertrabecular spaces are left. So it's a significant uh, um, uh, restriction to dilatation, so important uh, symptoms of uh, constrictive uh, uh, cardiomyopathy that comes also in this kind of uh, hypertrophic proliferative uh, cardiomyopathy. This they present in this review paper by uh, Virmani as a typical benign, uh, well, quote unquote, benign. Uh, cardiomyopathy is not really benign. There is a, a severe uh, dilated cardiomyopathy behind, but that is the spectrum of uh, non-compaction in human pathology frequently, and this is what was previously recognized as non-compaction cardiomyopathy. Typically, this is uh, in the context of heart failure, probability of sudden death, probability of requiring transplant, probability of uh, requiring implantable defibrillator. This is a typically fibroelastosis inside the trabeculations. So let's summarize what we know now about the spectrum of presentation of non-compaction in human. And uh, we call this a simple, frequent, uh, but benign case that we found uh, in 20% of the normal people in Houston is the garden variety defined by a non-compact to compacted ratio uh, that vary, varies in our experience between one and five. Uh, Dr. Peterson decided that more than 2.3 should be called with a name, but actually it occurs with less than 2.3 or up to five uh, times th uh, higher thickness of the non-compaction with respect to the compaction part of the left ventricle. The localized uh, less than two uh, segments of the ventricle with non-compaction uh, is rare, but exists. The proliferative obstructive is less than one per thousand. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is one thousand. Any cases initially reported in the literature of non-compaction was in the context of neuromuscular dystrophy, uh, congenital heart diseases, especially uh, Epstein malformation of the mitral valve, on the tricuspid valve, it is the most frequent association in uh, patients with non-compaction and uh, congenital anomaly. 
This is a recent uh, review by Dr. Abustini of the University of Pavia that has a, a great uh, um, genomic uh, center, I'm very interested in uh, uh, the <clears throat> mutation that you can find in patients with uh, usually dilated cardiomyopathy. This is the first of three pages, uh, only showing six cases of uh, 52 different mutants that can be found in non-compaction uh, patients. So many uh, genes, something like 70% of the patients with cardiomyopathy of clinical importance have genetic identification, 30% or so don't have it. But in our population, the benign variety, there is no association with any genes uh, defect. Let's see if we can go to uh, MRI, as we have very little time left. Uh, see, this is the typical example of uh, how we studied the heart uh, by trying to quantify the level of hypertrophy of the non-compaction and the function of the heart as a pump and the function of the heart muscle in terms of thickness of the compact myocardium because it's obvious that these hearts with non-compaction have adequate muscle, simply have some decoration inside the muscle. Then my associate, Dr. Uribe, that fortunately today is not here, uh, describes as la barbita. It's a sort of a beer inside the muscle that works in the, in the non-compaction left ventricle without cardiomyopathy. But if you look at the type of analysis they went through, we went through something that is absolutely ridiculous in the precision, important, obviously not necessary in clinical cases, but we measure by a, a CMR42, it's a special program that does this automatically, in cross-section of the heart, in this case, this section, um, sorry, uh, we created radial thickness, uh, um, 97 different uh, uh, degrees of the circumference, and found out what it means to call the index of uh, Peterson non-compaction to compaction thickness. In, in, it's done in diastole, but diastole as this thickness here and this thickness there, and the lowest is there, but is not the usual non-compacted uh, level uh, thickness of the wall. But the important thing is that in systole, this is the inside of the non-compaction uh, with respect uh, to the outside of the uh, compact muscle that can be measured with the system. The thickness of the whole thing is much more than usual, but this part uh, with the compact myocardium, which is this part, is the only functional part. This is a typical uh, movie of, uh, uh, by MRI of the uh, longitudinal two-chamber uh, view. That is the compact, uh, the papillary muscle, the anterolateral papillary muscle that you see as it comes uh, from uh, uh, mitral valve apparatus touching the trabeculae. It leads to hypertrophy of the head of the papillary muscle, but the base is still non-compaction. The base of the papillary muscle is uh, on uh, trabeculae, and uh, that could be a diagnostic uh, uh, index of non-compaction. This is uh, by CAT scan angiography. It is much more precise. Unfortunately, it's only taken in diastole, so it doesn't give the full story. But you see very clearly in this uh, condition the thickness of the uh, compact myocardium and in diastole, the fibrous uh, uh, nature of these uh, uh, non-compacted uh, uh, fibers, uh, trabeculae, and the fact that the papillary muscle stop at this level, eventually continue into trabeculations. This is uh, what we see in longitudinal views. With the longitudinal views, you don't see so well neither the thickness of the compact nor the 
as, uh, extent of the hypoplasia, as you can see in cross section, this is the best way to really evaluate quantitatively the um, muscle in non compactional ventricle. This is an interesting finding a kid that does 18 hours of sports a week this is major uh, both uh, uh, swimming and uh, running football a lot of work and uh, the question was that this cause dilated cardiomyopathy with a thinning of the compa myocardium and it doesn't seem to be the case this is an endiastole on the left and then systole in the right. You see that the compact myocardium with all these things, this uh, um, measurement is uh, thinner in endiastole, but it compacts uh, to a good thickness in systole. This is what uh, we tend to summarize in this uh, table that compares the risk of using the uh, Peterson criteria to identify non-compaction cardiomyopathy. The um, table compares the efficiency of uh, four different uh, observers of the our population and uh, the consistency. Uh, the gold standard being the study done with cross-section that is much more precise and quantitative. It's consistent uh, with uh, aware doctors for non-compaction. Non-aware cardioradiologists have a consistency of the diagnosis of non-compaction left ventricle of 18 to 58% of, uh, of the cases. It's a very inefficient and uh, inconsistent uh, diagnosis. Let's go to something more dramatic. This is summarizing in two cases, the essence of what is non-compaction of the benign kind, the guardian variety. Two cases in diastole and in systole showing the non-compaction in those uh, 97 segments of measurements. By Peterson criteria, this would be a very severe non-compaction left ventricle with a ratio of uh, uh, basically 5 to 1, or actually 3.06 to 1, uh, that in systole actually goes to a normal left ventricular thickness all through the myocardial circumference. So the functional behavior of the residual muscle is not bad at all. And in this hypertrophic or uh, super trained uh, athletes. Uh, this was hypertrophy. The typical athlete's heart occurs also in non-compaction. So there is something to explain why thinning in diastole eventually leads to systolic normal thickness and excellent function. This is the most extreme kind of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy with non-compaction. You see a fairly thick non-compaction and very thin outer layer. This is in cross-section, much more precise, but confirming the fact that there is too little compact myocardium to make it a functional uh, heart. This is an important uh, conclusive slide uh, where we compare the normal left ventricular mass only the compact myocardium in uh, a normal heart and in a heart with non-compaction. And you see, this is the muscle. These are numbers of uh, grams. Uh, they are very much similar to the normal for these ages. So this is the, studied at 11 to 16 years of age. This is in non-compaction. It's very similar to the normal heart doesn't seem like non-compaction of the garden variety is affecting the function of the heart. And uh, this is basically the same concept in the global, not only transverse uh, 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 sections. What are the potential clinical complications on compaction? Uh, isolated non-compaction can uh, eventually, potentially, lead to dilated cardiomyopathy because of exercise, or hypertension, or 
pregnancy or a, a athletic exercise. This is not something that we could study in our population, but it seems like even in athletes for that age, you don't see manifestation of dilated cardiomyopathy. Arrhythmias, we obviously did only an EKG at rest in these people, and uh, we never saw a single PVC. I'm not sure that is correct, because probably when there was a PVC, they eliminated that tracing and put another one without PVCs. But uh, this type of uh, benign, clinically non-benign, and uh, non-compaction left ventricle is not accompanied by significant arrhythmias. Systemic embolism is uh, frequent in uh, bad uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, but not in the usual GV type of non-compaction. Aneurysm formation is an interesting question. And uh, we saw several kids with less than one millimeter of thickness of the wall of the left ventricle and some parts of the ventricle, and never saw bulging like uh, in, uh, uh, in aneurysm. Uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, we didn't see but uh, this phenomenon in our population. If you look at the younger with the older, comparing with the older kids, 10% more of the kids have ejection fraction between 40 and 50%, but none less than 40%. Let's go to a final point that is quite important because we need to explain why there is this a dramatic incidence of non-compaction in the general population. And this can be the reason. These are experiments done with uh, um, mice, but using food or medicine. This is retinoic acid, uh, vitamin A, given in excessive dosage in an embryo. The normal comparison and the effect of uh, vitamins either too low or too high in the body, it causes, it affects the, compacted, the compaction of the left ventricle. Look how severe non-compacted left ventricle case. It is possible that if uh, the administration of excessive amount of uh, vitamin A, but potentially many other environmental insults can cause a late uh, fetal type of disturbance in the compacting, compacting uh, process and cause uh, the uh, non-compaction of the benign variety. Let's see if we can uh, conclude uh, with these projects that we have now active. It is uh, about the uh, presence of uh, uh, non-compaction cardiomyopathy late after a benign presentation initially by uh, doing a studies at the higher age and it will be down there. To clarify, hypoplasia of the coronary artery is the cause of fibroelastosis. This is a study done, done by pathologists, especially Dr. Massimilian Buya and Anna Segura in our hospital or in the Texas Heart Institute. Uh, we need to find out uh, better histologically and molecularly the presence of the Purkinje fiber. Uh, the potential is that uh, non-compaction affects the utilization of left ventricular assist devices as the sucking effect of this cannula, the apex can suck in uh, trabeculae and cause the obstruction at the inflow of the machine. Uh, in uh, nuclear our nuclear uh, cardiologist has disappeared, but the nuclear uh, medicine is affected by this, uh, localized especially, but also diffuse hypo uh, development of the compact can cause false scars in uh, PET scans or uh, similar studies of left ventricular perfusion. The last uh, uh, mention here is uh, of a study that we are developing at this time with the military people to see definitively if at a higher age and in the presence of aggressive exercise uh, could uh, non-compacted uh, myocardium lead to uh, acquired dilated cardiomyopathy, hemodynamic cardiomyopathy.
So this is left uh, for you to discuss. If you have any more patience and time and interest, please. Thank you.